Good morning, Thailand. My name is Alex, and I have some updates from around the land of smiles for you today, this wonderful Wednesday, Valentine's Day, February 14th. We're going to start with our first story today, and that's that former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra is going to be released early from his prison sentence. Let's get into this one. So Thailand's former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra, a pivotal figure in the country's political landscape, is set to be released from prison following parole approval just six months after ending his 15-year self-imposed exile. His return and subsequent sentencing to eight years for charges including corruption, which was later reduced to one year by the king, mark a significant chapter in Thailand's political history. Thaksin, known for his popularity among the rural and working class despite opposition from elites, led the country from 2001 until his 2006 ousting in a coup. Eligible for parole due to his age and health, his imminent release underscores the enduring impact of his political legacy and the complex dynamics of Thai politics. Yeah, no doubt, complex. I mean, he was supposed to be arrested for a long time, came back, obviously we knew some sort of deal was going to be made, it was for one year, and then he didn't spend any time in prison, he was in his hospital room the entire time, and now it looks like he won't even serve the eight months that he was eventually taken down to. So, uh, what do you guys make of this? This is a very significant political figure in, in the Thai political landscape, and uh, yeah, he was drummed up on charges, but now released early. This would be par for the course in many, uh, many democracies. Although, uh, let's like I t even in my country, even Nixon going back to the 70s in America didn't face any jail time for all of the myriad corrupt uh, things he was up to. So, uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below, please. <clears throat> All right, uh, anyways, on to our next story. So uh, public discourse over the future of cannabis decriminalization in Thailand is set to take the center stage in the coming days. So uh, the push for cannabis decriminalization in Thailand experienced a setback yesterday, February 13th, as the Ministry of Public Health paused the process for further public dialogue and review. Initially aimed at medical rather than recreational use, the draft bill's ambiguity over recreational use and the proposed hefty penalty for such use have sparked controversy. Despite this, there's broad consensus on the need for regulation, especially to prevent illegal imports and monopolization by foreign entities. The delay in legislation ongoing for nearly two years raises concerns over continued ambiguity in cannabis laws. Meanwhile, pro-cannabis activists propose an alternative bill emphasizing private recreational use but maintaining public restrictions, aiming for a compromise that could avoid legal disputes and ensure regulatory compliance and tax revenue. The situation underscores the complex debate over cannabis regulation in Thailand, highlighting the challenges of balancing public health, law enforcement, and the cannabis industry's interests. Also, there could be some class action lawsuits on the horizon and should, should Thailand move forward, uh, there's certainly some rumblings of that going on because of just the sheer amount of different interests that are involved in the cannabis industry. Not only do you have the dispensaries themselves, you have the farms, you have the, the landlords of all of the uh, tenants that are paying for the corporate real estate, uh, uh, the space to operate their stores, and not to mention all of the uh, complementary industries that have sprung up around Thailand. There are all sorts of services and uh, products that are on this market uh, relying on customers being able to consume uh, legally. So uh, it seems like the debate is paused for now. We're going to get more feedback from the public. But what do you think uh, will be the future for cannabis here in Thailand? Seems up in the air. All right, now moving on to our next story. So a political activist in Thailand is facing legal repercussions after her protesting of royal motorcades. That's right. So uh, Kun Tantawan, a 22-year-old Thai activist, has faced legal challenges following her involvement in a series of incidents critiquing royal motorcades. Initially garnering attention for honking at a royal motorcade on February 4th, she escalated her activism by conducting public opinion polls on February 10th and a previous one on February 8th, 2022, regarding the impact of royal motorcades on traffic. A notable incident involved her and a companion honking at HRH Princess Mahashakri Siridon's motorcade, an act captured in a video that suggested an attempt to merge into the motorcade's lane rather than disrupt it. Now, Kun Tantawan's political engagement began during the Pandi, influenced by the dissolution of the Future Forward Party and her participation in various activist groups. She has been accused of violating Thailand's Les Majest law, leading to her detention and a significant hunger strike, highlighting her deep involvement in advocating for political change in Thailand. Again, the sensitive topic of uh, Les Majest and, of course, 
course, the uh, the status of, of royalty here in Thailand uh, becomes uh, an issue here. So this was a protest of royal motorcades and how they can exacerbate traffic, especially here in Bangkok. I mean, not that we need anything, <laughs> any more uh, traffic in this city. Obviously, this is one of the world's most foremost cities for traffic. So uh, this protest is multifaceted. Uh, of course, the, the special status of the royal family, but also uh, their impact on, uh, on getting around town. Now, uh, I want to know what do you guys think when it comes to the enforcement of the Les Majest law here in Thailand? It is still center stage. It is one of the hot button issues uh, of Thai politics and uh, continues to be. I'll refrain uh, from leaving my comments on that and uh, I'll let you guys let us know in the comments. All right, uh, now moving on to our next story. It, te it, blew. it turns out that vintage vehicles, they are very popular here in the land of smiles. And uh, that is uh, coming to the forefront. Yes, classic car culture represents a global phenomenon that transcends mere hobbyism, embodying a journey through the technological and design evolution of the automotive world. This culture is burgeoned from its modest origins into a dynamic and vibrant community cherished for the stories, history, and connections it fosters among enthusiasts. The narrative of classic cars in Thailand, enriched by the cultural infusion from the American presence during the Vietnam War, highlights the profound impact of these vehicles on the local and cultural landscape. In Thailand, classic cars are not only revered for their timeless design and the driving experience they offer, but also serve as cherished family heirlooms, strengthening familial bonds and bridging generational divides. The community aspect of classic car culture, rooted in a shared passion for preserving automotive history, showcases the enduring appeal and sentimental value of these historic vehicles. Additionally, the evolving custom car culture signifies a deepening relationship between humans and their vehicles, underpinned by sustainable practices and te technological advancements, further illustrating the multifaceted nature of car collecting and the timeless allure of classic automobiles. Surely that is the case. It seems like I've come across a, a, a million different vintage vehicle, classic car shows, classic bike shows. Here in the office alone, we have some Royal Enfield enthusiasts that uh, love to make their content and uh, actually get reposted by the actual Royal Enfield Instagram pages all the time. Isn't that right, Jason? That's right, he said. All right, cool. <laughs> but uh, I love it. I think it's really interesting, uh, especially compared to I, I, I used to live in China. They don't allow old road or old cars on the road. Uh, a lot of the old uh, vehicles in China are discontinued, not allowed. I think there's some sort of sense that they, they, they pollute more or they, they ugly up the place or something like that. However, I think when you're taking care of these vintage cars, there's so much personality and history and story there. And uh, it really brings people together, man. These events are huge, and uh, it's an interesting little cultural aspect of, uh, of, of Thailand that I think gets overlooked often. So what do you guys think? Have you ever been to any of the uh, classic car shows here in Thailand or classic bike shows? Because there's plenty to go around. <clears throat> All right, now moving on to our final story of the day. Now, some of you might have been to the Ed Sheeran concert over the weekend, and some of you may have been disturbed by some put high party members. A weird scandal's going on. So yeah, during the Ed Sheeran recent Bangkok concert, a disturbance originating from the VIP section led to a social media uproar and audience discomfort, with some attendees even leaving the venue. Amidst the controversy, Petong Tan, leader of the Put Thai party, refuted claims of her involvement in the noise disruption. She emphasized that concerts are meant to be joyful places where noise and singing along are part of the experience, differentiating concert etiquette from that of quieter venues. Despite criticisms, especially from international National fans, Petong Tan praised the venue's amenities and denied contributing to the disturbance. This incident has sparked a broader discussion on concert behavior and the balance between enthusiasm and respect for other concert goers. Ed Sheeran, meanwhile, embraced Thai culture during his visit, highlighting his performance and personal engagements in Thailand, including receiving a traditional tattoo, showcasing the cultural exchange aspects of his tour. Oh yeah, don't go overboard. Now, of course, you're at the concert, you're drinking, you're having a good time. Uh, it's one of your favorite brands. Sing along, please, but of course, make sure that uh, you're being considerate to the other concert goers. Everybody's paying a lot of money to be there, so uh, it's important that uh, everybody gets their money's worth and feels like they're having a good time. So, uh, yeah, just be considerate. I think. What do you make of it? Where do you draw the line between enthusiasm and consideration for your fellow concert goers? I know this can be very different based on the kind of music you're watching. Uh, if I'm at a, a Slipknot concert, I'm going to be in the mosh pit rocking around. If I'm at Ed Sheeran, I'm going to be a little more tame. You tell me. 
All right, guys. Well, that'll do it for our updates for today, Valentine's Day. I hope you have a lovely one. Uh, we'll be back with all of our members tomorrow for, on February 15th and back on Friday for all of our subscribers. So please do tune in.